Hi everyone! So today's bookbinding video is going to be about my top suggested books to learn bookbinding. Just the ones that really helped me out. The reason why I decided to do this video was because somebody messaged me a couple of weeks ago and they asked if I could recommend any books. And I was like, yeah, go for it. I wrote a whole blog post about it like nearly a year ago, looking for the link to my blog. And for some reason, the post has just vanished. I don't know how. I can't get it back. I've tried. And I just thought, why not make a YouTube video instead? I'm going to talk about the books that I think are best. Sorry if anybody has wrote these books and I say your name wrong. As you can probably already tell, like, I'm pretty rubbish at pronouncing things. Okay, so my first book, if basically you only had to buy one book and you weren't going to buy any more, I would suggest this book. This is Bookbinding, a step-by-step -step guide by Kathy Abbott. Can you see? This is just a really good book. It covers all the basic aspects of bookbinding and Kathy is really thorough about all the tiny points that are really important towards bookbinding. It's really illustrated. It's got lots of pictures along the way, so if you are stuck and you don't understand the instructions, there are pictures, really good pictures, to guide you through also. But she explains everything so well that it's just, it's just a really good book. My second book is Making Handmade Books. 100 plus bindings, structures and forms. And that one is by Elisa Golden. Like I said, sorry if I pronounced the names wrong. This is also a really good book. This is definitely book art inspired. It's not really technical book binding, but it just has so many different types of books you can make from folding ones. It's got Coptic stitch, French link stitch. The instructions in here as well are pretty straightforward. They're pretty easy to understand. So this is another one I would suggest for a beginner. I found this one so useful when I first started bookbinding, so I would definitely recommend this. Also, it has good pictures as well, good illustrations. You probably never realised once you got this book how many different books you can actually make in all sorts of shapes and forms. That was really, really, like, cringe. Sorry. So my next books are the Keith Smith books non-adhesive binding volumes. So there's one, two and three. This is volume one of the non-adhesive binding books. This one is a really good guide just to making books without glue. So it's got quite a few exposed spine bindings in here. It's got Japanese stab bindings. It's got long stitch, basic kind of books. The next one is volume two. This is one, two, and three section sewings. This one is really good, especially for like making leather bound books. It has got just such a range of styles of stitching. It's just really creative. There is just so many different bindings in here that you just never even would have thought of. A lot of pictures I see on Pinterest and Instagram, they have come from this book. If you're an amateur bookbinder, like a complete beginner, it might be a bit hard to understand. When I first got it, it was like a bit baffling, but once you kind of pick stuff up as you go, it gets a lot easier to understand. That's that one. The non adhesive binding volume three. Well, I, I bought one and three originally, and then I bought two afterwards. I had got this pretty early on when I started bookbinding and this one I opened it and I'd only been binding books for three months and I was just like whoa it just went straight over my head. It took me about two years till I finally really opened this again and I was like actually now it all makes sense. By then I was obviously a lot more trained and I knew what I was doing. If you're an absolute beginner I would say maybe leave this one a while. I mean it has some amazing stitches. Obviously on the cover you can see it's got caterpillar stitch. That's a really creative style. For instance, I seen a book that was like sewn over cords. I think the, the, the picture must have been taken from this book because it was black and white. And I was like, oh, let, let's see how to do that. And bearing in mind, obviously I'd only been 
learning for a little while and this was the diagram I was just like what that's pretty complex but now it's really straightforward for me to understand look there's another picture it's just kind of like what if you're like a complete novice that's just straight over the head this is an amazing book but I would maybe look at it once you've been bookbinding for a little while just so you know the basics. The next book I'm going to talk about is Hand Book Binding, A Manual of Instruction by Aldrin A. Watson. This one, in all honesty, every year I get Waterstone vouchers. If you don't know what Waterstones is, Waterstones is like a national book shop in the UK. I had some credit left over on a gift voucher that I had for Christmas and I decided to buy this just because I had the credit left but that sounds really bad. I had been bookbinding for about three years by the time I got this. It's like a really basic, basic book. It covers the beginner stuff. Like the cover's really nice and you, I know you should never really, I, I know books are supposed to be for learning but I just find, find like the illustrations a little bit boring, sorry. If you're interested in repairs though, it does actually have quite a good guide in this of how to like repair an old book. So this might be good for you if you want to repair old books. I'm not really into repairing old books. I think that's just why I've never really liked this one as much in a nice way. The next book is Headbands and How to Work Them by Jane Greenfield and Jenny Hill. This book is like, it's like a little godsend. Generally on the internet, there isn't many tutorials on how to sew headbands or end bands as some people call them. I did do a workshop once where I learned to sew like a basic headband and the lady who taught it actually did suggest this book. It is just, yeah, an absolute godsend. It's like the Bible for headbands. I recommend this so highly. Jane Greenfield and Jenny Hill did a good job making this. Headbands and how to work them, the best book ever. My last book today is called I Love Handmade Books. I actually only bought this this year. In America, the USA, I know this has got a different name. It's called The Little Book of Bookmaking, Timeless Techniques and Fresh Ideas for Beautiful Handmade Books. And on the UK version, it says it's by Charlotte Rivers. And I know on the US version, Esther K. Smith is also on like the cover as an author. So yeah, I, the only thing that's different though is the cover. Everything else inside is exactly the same. This is a really good book though, also for beginners. Mainly, I just like to look at the really pretty pictures. That's really shallow. But yeah, there's so many pretty books in this book just to look at. The first half of the book showcases book binders and it just has some really, really pretty pictures of really pretty books. And then the second half of the book, it has also like tutorials in there. It has a like Coptic stitch, French link stitch, um, Japanese stab binding. Look at this one. Look at this. How pretty is that? That's a, a Coptic stitch book there by Ruth Bleakley. Prettiness! Okay, <laughs> that was my guide on really good books to start out with when you're learning book binding. I hope it's helped. I know they really helped me in the beginning because when I started as well there was like no tutorials on the internet so like books were the way forward. Yeah, I hope that they've all helped. I'll mention them all in the comments below just in case you haven't understood what I've said. <laughs> if you'd like to comment any books that you find interesting that I've not mentioned that you'd like to share then comment below I hope you found this interesting thanks for watching <laughs> bye